Seven. And you need to understand it. Okay. We're going to start back at the club. Whose idea was it to go get money because you wanted drinks, you wanted dope, or whatever you I wanted? I wanted to go home. That was Ryan's idea. Ryan's yeah. idea. And the best of my knowledge, yes. I don't want to even hear whose idea, or best of my knowledge, whose idea was it? It was Ryan's idea. Ryan's idea. And what did he tell you? That we need some more money for drinks and the sister wouldn't give us any more money. Okay. And he said, we're going to do what about it? We're going to rob somebody. You're going to rob somebody. And so that led up to you and him leaving together? Yes. And you went to where? We went to the Tribune building. Well, before that, you went where? We went to his car. To his car, which was parked where? Down whatever street that is, that by the orders of Where we drove through earlier, you and I and the other two detectives, yeah. on, on First Street. Mm -hmm. It was parked alongside the street. And you went there for what reason? To get something out of his car. Get yeah. something out to, of his car. To get a weapon out of his car. To get a weapon out of his In car. Case what we try to do. Try Whose to idea out. was it to go to the car to get a weapon out of the car? It was his. His idea. Yes. And how did he articulate that to you? Basically, that we're young, we're in high school, we we just go try to rob someone just regularly without anything. So you're young. You're afraid you get because you're not a big stature, and you wanted to go to the car to get something out of the car, a weapon, Yes. in order to do what with it? If it came down to it. If it came down to it. To beat someone with to it. To beat someone with it. To possibly beat them. To death. To death? Hopefully. Hopefully? Hopefully not, no. I mean, hopefully it wouldn't come to that. But you went there with the knowledge yes. of getting a weapon, and it could come to that. And it did. And it did come to that. Yes. And who took the weapon out of the car? All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, if you want to implant memory in somebody, this is a hell of a way to do it. You put them under pressure, you get right in their face, even when they're friendly, his legs are still spread, you're right in there, you're driving, 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 raising those stress hormones. Brain is turning off. Remember, the brain turns off in the order it came online. So it turns off the last thing that developed first meaning our prefrontal cortex and all of our thinking fancy brain starts to turn off and the animal brain takes over to look out for us and protect us. But if you could see this kid's eyes, or pupils are probably dilated. Yeah, I can't see him well enough to tell all those pieces that I would like from fight or flight. But once you're in that fight or flight in that limbic brain, everything I'm saying to you is registering in a different way. And he is very specific in his language. Could all be innocuous, could not be trying to inject. Doesn't matter. You're still injecting. And when the guy says the right words, he even goes back at him and reconfirms those words. That's a recipe for disaster. He makes me think of my cousin Vinny guy, the attorney on my cousin Vinny, when he goes identical, when you know he's making back the same point the person said. You listen to those things and listen to this cadence, the pitch, everything he does, he's downward telling as he goes in. This is locking stuff down in that guy's brain. He even tells him which street by name instead of that street we went down today which street by name it, look if i were trying to set a false confession up i couldn't do a better job now did they do it intentionally that's for the jury to figure out somewhere else scott what do you got all right yeah the detective he's telling chuck what he wants to hear what the detective wants to hear. He's just like you just said he's telling him what he wants him to say and what he wants him to hear or what he wants to hear from him that's not the way you do it. And then he scoots up real close and starts in with this, this, you know, TV show thing he's doing. I don't know what he's doing in there. There's no reason to be doing that at all. Not even a little bit. And he's being, oh, here's what we're going to do. And the kid, look at his body language. He's wide open. He's still, he's still in that open, I'm listening. I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not being deceptive. I'm not, I'm just listening. There's not, there's, this is so, it, these things just butt up against each other so hard. Anybody that would have watched this, I think from a, from a perspective that we have and and saw that, or just another detective from, you know, an older guy would have seen that and gone, oh, dude, this is not, this is not right. And he would have said, you're doing this wrong. And he would have gone, he would have gone upstairs. He would have gone above the guy and said, you, you need to get this guy retrained. This is ridiculous. This is, this is out of hand. I, 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 I get to watch what I say. Chase, what do you got? 
I trained an entire police department of detectives in Alabama. And one of those detectives was, I don't know, 28, 29, the younger, on the younger side. And I said, uh, we were on a lunch break. And I said, where did you get your interrogation training before all of this? And she said, well, just watching Law and Order. Oof. It sounds oh. like it. And what I thought was that was uncommon. It's far more common uh, now that I've been around. Uh, than you might imagine. So that might be what we're seeing in some of these clips. And what we're seeing here in this video is not subtle in any way. And it it was upsetting to watch. It made me upset. Uh, when he's saying, I don't, don't want to hear any of this to the best of my knowledge stuff, I cannot imagine a jury admitting this or this contributing to any kind of conviction. I can't imagine. It's the worst I've ever heard. He's instructing a person on how to answer questions and not at all after the truth. This is desperation for confession. So he's walking him into these narratives. I was checking to see if I was frozen there. Uh, with each leading question and only allowing agreement with him, I cannot believe this is allowed in court. In my interrogation training, I have an entire section that's literally titled How to Create False Confessions. I have that in my training so that anyone who's ever gone through my course will never be able to say they got a false confession on accident. If they do what I showed them on that slide or on those several slides, then I instantly prove beyond a doubt that they knew that it leads to a false confession. There's a lot of training out there that has a couple lists of what people shouldn't do, but I like to really throw it in people's face so there's no escape from being able to say they were well informed that their behavior might lead to a false confession, which is really what we're seeing here. We're seeing a recipe for false confession. We're seeing high authority, over usage of authority, uh, overusing or abusing trust. And we're on the other side, we're seeing a person who's fantasy prone, highly suggestible, young, impressionable, and already coming in there talking about memory problems. And a lot of these, I've seen interrogations where they manufacture memory deficits, where they manufacture deficits in memory and awareness of deficits in memory just to get someone to start questioning their own. Uh, and this is kind of down that line. And I don't think these people meant to harm anybody. I think that they thought this was the job that they were doing. Maybe this was even, and I've seen it before, I promise you, this was maybe part of the training they received. I don't know for sure. Greg? Mark. Correct. Mark or Scott. That's right. Yes. It's been. It's been. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, listen, uh, nobody nobody means to end up like this. Nobody means to go into the circus, but sometimes you wake up, uh, you know, the next day and you find you've got a shovel in your hand and you're around the back of an elephant and, and there you are. You've joined the circus. To your point, Scott, um, you know, this car uh, analogy, uh, he has got a car. It's, it's one of those clown circus cars. The wheels fall off, you know, the engine steams, three of them get out. I mean, it's a, it's now a complete clown show. He is the boss clown. He's what we call the August clown. He's the person who thinks they're somebody of status, but really they have nothing. He's a, he's a pound shop cop in this situation. And in front of him is, is this little clown that we call the Zanny, the Zany, who's who's wide-eyed and innocent and has no idea what's going on. And, and it's now impro night, because what's happening is, is we got the, the interrogator here putting out an option, an idea. The the subject finishes the sentence. The next per the, the the interrogator then picks up on that and builds again. It's just they're finishing each other's sentences. They're evolving now together. This improvised idea of what might have gone on. It's yeah, it's a complete circus for me uh, at this point. Uh, I like a circus, but it has to be in the right right place out in a field somewhere you know away from everything you can go you, you buy a ticket you can go and visit it's all a lot of fun and then you go home uh you know that circus shouldn't be 
in your public uh, institutions, especially ones that are designed to protect you and not not harm you in any way. So uh, it's a, it's tough that you see this kind of um, behavior, clownish behavior inside this situation. Uh, that's all I got on that one. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think they should be hanging wallpaper in, in the bathroom at a gas station out near the airport. One of those tape replays. And you need to understand it, okay? We're gonna start back at the club. Whose idea was it to go get money because you wanted drinks, you wanted dope, or whatever you I wanted? I wanted to go home, that was Ryan's idea. Ryan's yeah. idea, and- the best of my knowledge, yes. I don't want to even hear whose idea, or best of my knowledge, whose idea was it? It was Ryan's idea. Ryan's idea, and what did he tell you? That we need some more money for drinks and the sister wouldn't give us any more money. Okay, and he said, we're gonna do what about it? We're gonna rob somebody. You're gonna rob somebody. And so that led up to you and him leaving together? Yes. And you went to where? We went to the Tribune building. Well, before that, you went where? We went to his car. To his car, which was parked where? Down whatever street that is that by the orders on. Where we drove through earlier, you and I and the other two detectives, yes. on, on First Street. Yes. It was parked alongside the street. And you went there for what reason? To get something out of his car. Get yeah. something out to, of his car. To get a weapon out of his car. To get a weapon out of his car. In case what we try to do. Try Whose to idea out. was it to go to the car to get a weapon out of the car? It was his. His idea. Yes. And how did he articulate that to you? Basically that we're young, we're in high school. If we just go try to rob someone just regularly without anything. So you're young, you're afraid you get because you're not a big stature and you wanted to go to the car to get something out of the car, a weapon. Yes. In order to do what with it? If it came down to it. If it came down to it. To beat someone with it. To beat someone with it. To possibly beat them. To death. To death? Hopefully. Hopefully? Hopefully not, no. I mean, hopefully it wouldn't come to that. But you went there with the knowledge yes. of getting a weapon, and it could come to that. And it did. And it did come to that. Yes. And who took the weapon out of the car? If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.